Hey guys, it's Kim from Honey Trail Farm. You're watching me stand in front of the chickens that we got moved out to pasture yesterday. Thank the Lord, there's no more chicken poop on my porch. And hopefully no more chickens in the greenhouse. There's honey behind me. It rained overnight, <clears throat> all night, but we it's looking like we have about an hour break in the rain. So I'm gonna hurry up and milk and get my chores done in the not rainy hour. First, I'm gonna open the garage where I've been hardening, hardening off my plants that are going out. So, behind me you see um, my method of hardening off my plants. I've only got about a hundred more trays to do. <laughs> so this is round one. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've got a cold. I've got uh, all different kinds of things. Yarrow, straw flower, calendula, snapdragon, sage, chamomile, lettuces, status, just, and more even than that. But this is kind of my cool flowers. This. Look! Excuse me, Mr. Worm, how did you even get in there? Excuse me. So it's working out great. Um, because when you have this many trays, carrying them in and out of the greenhouse a hundred times just really didn't sound fun. So I've got a rolling cart um, with wheels, and then I've got this black netting, actually, that was left here by the last owners. Uh, they had it over their chicken coop, and this is how I'm keeping the chickens out and hardening off my plants, and it's working great. I just roll them out for an hour, roll them back in the next day. You know how hardening off goes. But <sighs> Miss Honey's over here staring at me. <laughs> and the chickens. So I better get to it. Milking in the field was like super pi picturesque with like the green and the lush until now it's raining mud. So that'll be fun to sit in all morning. Yeah. Keeping our bee pepper away while I'm milking honey is literally the bane of my existence. That annoying sister that won't leave you alone. Where we're keeping the chickens is where I'm gonna plant my um, corn and squash and melons and all the things that vine. I'm gonna do a whole separate garden because it quickly turns into a jungle. But it's right beside where I'm out here milking. So now we get to hear the rooster hundred times. We're actually going to be drying her off within the next month. It's late, ow, it's late April right now and I want to have her dried off by June because she's due to calve in September and I want to give her a nice break. Um, gain some weight a little bit and just relax before calving because we got her in November and I have no idea what her history is so I don't know how long she's been in lactation and I just want to give her a nice break 
Hunter requested his special drink this morning. We call it a syrup treat. It is a jar with maple syrup and cinnamon in it, and it is so good. I know. All right, look at this frothy, <laughs> delicious milk. Yum 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 yum. What do you think? Good. You haven't even drank it yet. Is it good? Okay, now I have to feed the chickens and the pigs and the steer, but it's raining now. At least I beat the rain for the milking part, because the sitting, come on Gunner, sitting in the rain, sorry, so close to that at all. Sitting in the rain while milking doesn't sound very fun. I'm gonna turn this off until I get where I'm going. separate him from from this honey because that was our best way of weaning and I just I feel bad for the guy well cows are herd animals so they really don't like to be alone him and mom can see each other they just can't get to each other so they're only like probably a hundred feet apart from fence to fence, but they just, they've they settled down quite a bit, but the first couple days they just cried back and forth to each other. It was kind of sad, but necessary, but sad. There you go. He's super standoffish to people, which is why we couldn't wean him because he won't let us catch him. It's okay, buddy. Oh, we're getting a little taste. Oh, that was sweet. That was the closest he's let me get to him. Okay, now pigs. All of our feed we get from our local Am Amish like farm supply store and so I was just feeding and this is new because we just got these pigs um, it kind of smells like apples like it honestly smells good <laughs> but I'm gonna mix that with um, this honey's yelling at me I'm gonna mix their grain with some skim milk that I had to give to the pigs to make room because we are getting so much milk now that we're weaning and so much cream like I just made a pound and a half of butter yesterday from only two days worth of milking like that would have taken me a week at least probably more than that when I was calf sharing 
Are you guys hungry? Gotta throw some feed for Kathy. Don't tell the others, but she's my favorite. <laughs> Look, this tray of tomatoes is looking great. I got tomatoes and peppers and tomatoes and peppers. <laughs> and more peppers and dahlias and dahlia cutting or uh, dahlia seeds. I have so far planted about 200 or up potted 200 dahlia um, seeds and I've got, look how many more. I planted a thousand pack thinking that I would only have about 50% germination. Um, for future reference, in my experience, dahlia seeds have, the dahlia seeds that I ordered had a very good germination rate and now I have a thousand seedlings and you know I hate to lose any but I'm gonna have to just pitch them. I got a little break. Hunter um, is surprisingly taking a nap. Those are few and far between these days unless like we're in the car but every time he does take one I run to the greenhouse so that I can have peace. But um, I'm getting ready to pop up, pot up the last of my peppers that I have. Um, last week is pretty much when I potted everything up. And this is just growth from, this is a tomato, and this isn't even a big one. This is growth from one week, okay? It may not look like much, but when I put, so these were like, let me show you how I start my tomatoes and peppers. <clears throat> So basically, I will have like a, a six cell, like, like this one. Like you can see that I've already done all these and these two are the only ones left. So I will start like 10 seeds or more in each cell and when they get up about this tall, um, I just pluck them out and put them in their own pot and they totally take off. So everything that I potted up last week was this big. So in one week, they went from these little tiny, little tiny things to this. It may not seem like much, but really, I potted the whole stem. So I potted up everything except for the very top leaves. Like the new, these two new leaves are, are these two leaves on the top are new like they'd only had two sets so everything is growing really good we had a few days of like really warm weather and I'm sure that sped everything up but the real thing that I was going to talk about today because I've already made a tomato video which is way more extensive than my pepper varieties although I do love peppers too I just they don't serve as many purposes as the tomato does for our household because we are a bunch of weenies and we don't like anything spicy. Like I think a jalapeno is too hot to just eat. Um, and I can take a little bit of heat, but I feel like my homegrown peppers are so much hotter than what you get like at the store. Like even a jalapeno is like 10 times hotter than I remember jalapenos being. So. In past years, I have grown a few different varieties of hot peppers, but this year I'm really narrowing it down. So I'm pretty sure the only hot peppers that I'm growing this year is a jalapeno, and I'm saying hot, like it's not really hot, a jalapeno because you gotta have it to like make salsa and jalapeno poppers and add it in a few little things like that. And um, sugar rush peach. So that's a really tropical hot pepper. It is hot, believe me, but um, for the last couple years I've made a really good fermented hot sauce and last year I put uh, the peach in there and I really liked it. And also I'm going to make 
a few rounds of salsa that have the hot peppers in them. So I needed a little bit of a kick, but um, we really don't like anything spicy, like not even remotely spicy. So, but the thing that I found a couple years ago that I re have really been liking is instead of a jalapeno, I do a nata pino. So they bred that um, down from a jalapeno but it doesn't have any heat at all it just tastes like a jalapeno but it's not spicy and I love that um, the main ways that I use peppers like in preserving we eat them fresh all summer while we have them but to put them away I do pickled peppers so I do um, like pepper rings that and I put them on salads and sandwiches sometimes I eat them plain I really love I first figured out that I like them because I was buying those like uh, pickled banana pepper rings from the store and I was like I can make that and plus when you make it yourself you can use all different kinds of peppers and then it's colorful which is fun and then um, the habanada is like a habanero but no heat and it is so good although sometimes you might get one that's like you get up to the seeds and you're like that is a little bit warm but for the most part like 99% of them are like uh, like unlike any pepper that you've ever tried I can almost guarantee it's like super fruity it's like tropical tasting and it's so good it, it's not one that would be well preserved because it has really thin walls so I feel like when you put it in the canner it would get mushy but that's one that you just enjoy enjoy it in the season while you have it so other than the heatless peppers um, one that I grew last year for the first time that I will never never grow a garden without this ever again is a shishito and I know you can get those at the grocery store some I see them in the summer sometimes but I had never had them oh my gosh my family mom I say my family my kids are picky eater so they'll eat fresh peppers all day but not really cooked but what you do like I'm growing like at least 15 probably plants of these so that we can have enough because you can't preserve these it's another one with like thin wall thin um, flesh so you can't really preserve it very good um, you blister them in a pan like with some olive oil or butter or whatever First you poke a hole in it. I haven't experienced this, but someone told me once that they'll explode, so I just do it. So you poke a hole in it, and then you blister them in the pan until they're like dark around the edges. And you, I make this like, like mayo sauce, kind of, if you've been to the Chinese restaurant and you've had yum yum sauce, or Japanese, I think that's Japanese. You've had yum yum sauce. I make like a version of that, and it is so, like, me and my husband were just talking about this the other day. We cannot wait. Like, I potted up probably 15 or 20 plants, and he was like, you're not selling any of those, are you? Like, we have to have those for our house. So we're really excited about the shishitos. One that I'm growing that's common is uh, pepperoncinis. I'm going to grow those this year so I can make pickled pepperoncinis because my mom made this roast this year and <clears throat> she followed a recipe that had pepper like pickled pepperoncinis in it so good so now I can't stop thinking about that either so I'm gonna grow those to preserve and then as far as bell peppers I really narrowed it down this year I grew a lot of peppers last year and I really liked some of them but some of them I just wasn't that impressed by either their yield was like really not great like it would have like five to ten peppers on a plant and I need it to make a lot more than that so I figured out my favorites this year on um, let's see as far as bell, bell peppers go I always grow the purple beauty because it's purple and beautiful um, the Ozark Giant is one that's pretty good it's like a big it turns from green to red I believe <clears throat> but it had pretty good yield I'm growing a yellow one called Sunbright. Let's see what else I got. Um, a bell pepper that 
uh, yields pretty good is King of the North. That's another red bell pepper, but it's supposed to grow well in like a short seasoned area. Not that our season is super short, but it's not super long either. And bell peppers take a long time to turn. Um, I'm growing just the classic California Wonder, and it's the Golden California Wonder. Uh, one that I'm excited about that's new to me this year is called the Yellow Monster. It grows like 10 inch long yellow bell peppers, and I'm just really excited to see that. I've never seen anything like that before. Oh, one that I will always grow and that's a favorite is it's an Italian frying pepper I believe but it's called the Jimmy Nardello it's like this slender ish red um, kind of like a snacking pepper I think it's called a grilling pepper I don't know but it's really good and really sweet um, Oh, one that's new to me this year it was new to Baker Creek last year I think and I didn't get to get the seeds is the Pippin's golden honey um, it's like a little snacking pepper. I'm also growing just a snack pepper that I got in a seeds from in a swap last year that literally just said sweet snacking pepper. And I planted it because I had seeds and it was really good. It was like one of the kids favorite because they make those like little snacking peppers that you can get from the store. Another pepper that I'm growing this year, this might be, no it's not the last one. It's a big it makes like this big but they're long it's like as as wide as a bell pepper but long it's called Ezvarsky, I think is how you say it I don't know where it originated but um, they were really good and really sweet and actually pretty prolific last year and I want to make I saw someone make uh, roasted red peppers and then so basically you you split them in half roast them like on broil in your oven and it makes it you know like brown and crispy and then the skin slides right off you slide it off the skin you put them in a jar you can just stack them on top of each other in like a mason jar and cover them in oil and they're preserved that way for like at least six months I take ex expiration dates as a suggestion not a true and hard so I just smell it and if it smells bad I throw it out but if it doesn't then I keep it um, <clears throat> but then you can blend it whenever you need it. You can use it as is. Pull it out of the jar and put it on a sandwich, put it on a salad, whatever you want. And you have roasted red peppers. Or what I'm going to do with it is blend it and make a dip like roasted red pepper. I think that sounds really good. So you've noticed when I say things, especially with peppers because I use those to cook with a lot. Um... I always dream about the end goal, like what I'm gonna use to pres what I'm gonna how I'm gonna preserve all of these peppers, because growing the garden is the easy part. Planting all the things, it's like, I mean, it's hard work putting it in, but after that, you're just waiting around and making sure it's watered and weeded. It's not that hard, but when the harvest starts rolling in and you've got a substantial size garden. You have to figure out what you're going to do with all of that. Because you would, at least for me, I would hate to see all of that go to waste. I cannot stand the thought. But this year is going to be different because I'm going to grow a garden specifically for my animals. Actually, it's not a whole garden for my animals. But I'm going to grow more than I was planning on growing. Especially of like the squash and the melons. Things that are easy that you just plant it and forget about it it doesn't take a whole lot of maintenance for my animals because I can feed those to the chickens the cows the pigs and really cut down on the amount of feed that we have to outsource at least in the season that of abundance that you go out there and you've got you missed picking zucchinis yesterday so now you have like a baby sized zucchini out there toss it to the pigs that's my plan um, I'm really gonna try to grow as much as I can this year, especially with the state of the world, you know? It feels better when you go down to your basement and you've got shelves and shelves of, of um, stable food that you can feed your family. So it's pretty rainy outside and I think it's gonna rain the rest of the day. Once again, thank you guys for watching and for listening to me talk about plants 
and watching me milk my cow. <laughs> Until next time.